Well, bonjour. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join Boundless Journeys today to learn more about our small group hiking adventure on the Tour de Mont Blanc. My name is Michelle, and I manage our Tour de Mont Blanc trip. I'm very excited to share this incredible journey in the French, Swiss, and Italian Alps with you and hope it will inspire you to join us on a trip in the near future. I love managing this tour because I've been fortunate enough to complete it myself and it's just fueled my appetite to immerse myself in the mountains at any opportunity. I'm definitely hooked. And combined with French and Alpine culture and working directly with all of our guides and hotels and guests, I feel very fortunate to be the central hub of all things Mont Blanc. And most importantly today, I'm pleased to introduce our lead guide, Eric Thiolier, who joins us from his home in Chamonix. Eric comes from a family of guides and has been hiking and climbing in the Alps since he was a young boy. He'll be coming upon his 10th year of guiding with Boundless Journeys and works with our phenomenal team of four other local guides, all from the Chamonix Valley as well. Eric is very involved in the Chamonix Valley and Valais Canton, writing guidebooks and maintaining trail markings. He's also been an invaluable partner for us in fine-tuning our itinerary to what it is today, really providing the best way to experience the Tour de Mont Blanc in a nine-day trip. He's a fantastic travel companion, and he was proud of where his roots have been for generations. And travelers can rest, rest assured that they have an enlightening, experienced leader who knows all the ins and outs of the roots. Welcome, Eric. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I'll start with sharing an overview of the trip and distinguishing features of our Boundless Journeys itinerary. And then I'll hand it over to Eric. First, this trip is safe and easy to get to. We fly in and out of Geneva and take a short transfer to Chamonix. It includes a wonderful inviting accommodations, typical of the Alpine region and equivalent to a three-star hotel level and all in authentic mountain, cha mountain chalet style accommodations. Also, we have experienced knowledgeable and friendly guides who share their insight of the culture, flora and fauna of the area and who know the miles of trails like the back of their hand. Uh, this region offers superb Savoyard food from picnics on the trail to the hearty fair in the evenings and not to mention the French wines and cheeses. Uh, the Tour de Mont Blanc is Europe's most famous and iconic long distance hikes. And it's also spe that includes spectacular views of craggy peaks, imposing glaciers, and expansive valleys, alpine forests. Once you think you've seen the most incredible view, your jaw drops again around the next corner. And lots of cows with cowbells. Just let our guys take care of everything while you can let go and be in the moment every step along the trail. Now, in your research, you'll likely come across various versions and itineraries of this trip, and I'd like to share a few important distinguishing features of our specific itinerary and why it truly is the best way to experience the Tour de Mont Blanc in a nine-day trip. Um, we do include the three-star accommodation levels authentic to the region, and we stay away from the mountain huts where one sleeps more sardine style in bunk beds. We stop there just for some, for some lovely snacks along the way. And we offer the only trip with the first two nights included in Chamonix, which is key for three reasons. Um, for one, this offers the opportunity to start out with a comparatively less challenging day hike to acclimatize to the terrain before diving into the longer and more challenging hikes in the Mont Blanc range itself, which is a very smart and safe way to start the journey. And this uh, introductory hike is along a section of the Tour de Mont Blanc in the Aiguille Rouge, which is on the west side of the valley, on one of the most spectacular sections of the Tour de Mont Blanc. It gives an astounding vantage point from where you can see Mont Blanc itself and the surrounding mountains around which we'll be walking throughout the week. And this also gives the opportunity to return to Chamonix for a second night, allowing the chance to purchase any last minute items you might need for the trek, and also a chance to explore town and dine out on your own. On our trip, uh, Boundless Journeys includes wine and beer with all dinners in the tour, an added bonus where you don't have to bother pulling out your wallet for individual drinks. And we also include snack and refreshment stops in the mountain huts and, and places along the way. And I myself work directly with the guides, hotels, restaurants, and transfer companies, giving us more control over maintaining the quality of every component of the trip, which is invaluable. And it keeps me on my toes with my French. And Eric and our guides are always there when we need them to check things out locally or answer any questions, always keeping us fresh and up to date. So without further ado, I'll let Eric himself take us through the trip. Eric, thank you so much for making the time to join us from France today. We certainly appreciate having your expertise. Uh, hello, everyone. So my name is uh, Eric Joliet, born and raised in Chamonix, here at the foot of the Mont Blanc. This next summer, it will be my 40th season guiding guests around Mont Blanc along with many other destinations in the Alps and Europe. In the winter, I'm a fully qualified ski instructor and certainly enjoy being outdoors all the time. 
I've also been involved with ski racing and a number of years and during that time lived in the States and worked very closely with the US ski team in the World Cup circuit. Decided to come home at the end, back to the Alps, which I see as the best place in the world, of course. Chamonix offers a large panel of activities from river rafting to climbing, but the most popular one for nearly 75% of the visitors is certainly hiking, as there is so many fantastic places to go and incredible sceneries everywhere. Chamonix has been the must for climbers and tourism since the first visitors in the 17th century. The Tour du Mont Blanc originates in Chamonix as the town offers all the services needed in terms of easy connection to Geneva Airport, only one hour away, extensive services and quality lodging in family-run comfortable three-star hotel. The TMB, short for Tour du Mont Blanc, takes us through three countries in only one week and nowhere else in the world you can do that. In only a few days, you can experience three different cultures and during various steep type of food. Notice how buildings are different, use two different monies, feel the different attitude and approach of life from the locals. Yet we find that the mountains have dictated the same questions, the same needs, the same answers, and that people have a common background that they share over the borders in the love for the area and the hard work to adapt to the very harsh conditions of the mountain. The hiking route takes us all around the Mont Blanc range, the highest one in the Alps, in a week. We start in Chamonix where we have a full day hiking to start, enjoy the area and get a chance to stretch the legs before the actual trip. The next two nights are still in France, in Les Contamines and Les Chapieux Bouc Saint Maurice before cross, crossing the border and staying in Italy in Courmayeur in the Aosta Valley. The following nights are in Switzerland, in Champé, Trien, before a return to Chamonix. Over the week, we average about 10 miles per day and a hiking time of five to five and a half hours per day. This is walking time only and does not include all the various stops for picture taking, closing adjustment, coffee and snack stops. And of course, a nice leisurely lunch in the field. We hike on trails that are well maintained by the local communities, but we are still in a mountainous environment and we should expect to find all kinds of terrain. That is rocky trails, short screes to cross along with some extensive sections of easy dirt surface. Snow can easily be found at the high passes, especially for the early part of the summer through June and sometimes early July. The best way to prepare for the hike would be to have the experience of this type of terrain and be comfortable walking over rocky terrains, tree routes, etc. Walking with a pack is also a good way to get used to the proper hiking that is ahead of us. Regarding fitness level and determining if this trip is right for you, you certainly don't need to be an extreme athlete, but considering this is a more strenuous trip with consecutive full days of hiking, it is important to have an above average fitness level and to be someone who exercises regularly and has the motivation to participate in a more demanding yet very rewarding trek. Having some hiking experience and comfort on dirt and rocky uneven trails is important. And in the few months prior to the trip, for example, we suggest to prepare by engaging in moderate to strenuous cardiovascular exercise, hiking, running, or cycling for at least 45 minutes uh, to an hour, about five to six times a week, as well as adding longer activities whenever possible and on the weekends. But nothing is, is better than actually getting out into some hilly or mountainous terrain itself as much as you can in preparing for the trip. Um, yet, if you don't have mountainous terrain right out the door, longer bike rides or other moderately strenuous activities is also helpful. The more prepared and fit you are for the trip, the more comfortable and enjoyable your experience will be, which is the ultimate goal. Well, a typical day during the hike is to start after a good breakfast around 8.30 a.m., either straight out of the hotel door or sometimes using a transfer to the trailhead. The morning includes a few stops on the way, having a snack at midpoint. Lunch is taken out in the field if the weather allows it, or otherwise there is the option to carry on to a further mountain hut for a shelter. The day hiking finishes around 4.35 p.m. The longest day uh, in Vaux Saint Maurice gets us to the hotel around 6 p.m. It is a full day, but the pace of hiking allows everyone to accomplish it. 
A normal pace is based on a vertical gain or loss of a thousand feet per hour. One of the highlights of the trip is of course the amazing sceneries all around the loop. Views are always changing from day to day, from hour to hour. Not to mention the clear morning lights and the fantastic sunsets. We are at the base of the highest peaks in the Alps and because the mountains are still young, they show their sharp needles straight up walls. Below each peak, extensive glaciers and fields of ice reinforce the contrast and add another color. The green vegetation, the white snow and ice, the brown rocks and the blue sky. Each day of year brings various flora from almost invisible blue spring gentians to summer cotton grass growing along streams. Plants have adapted to the environment, finding ways to conserve water and protect themselves from coldness and wind. Flowers colors are deeper than usual, making us stop along the way to admire them. Every altitude and specific environment has its biotop. Walking is a great way to enjoy and discover all those aspects. As we enjoy traveling on foot, we also have a chance to see a lot of animal life in the mountains. That can be, of course, the wildlife, and that is always a special treat to be able to spot a chamois or an ibex on the slopes near us. If the chamois is quite hard to approach, the ibex here, this big and wild mountain goat, can be seen along the trail, especially during our first day hiking, as we are in the middle of a nature reserve. Protected since 1974, they feel safe and have a, no fear of human beings as long as we respect the descent distance. Marmots can be seen all along the trip, and they are always good fun to hear them whistling, then spot them in a the field and quite often watch them run and hide in front of their den. Domestic animals are everywhere as a local economy is based on cow farming. Up high in the alpine meadows during the summer months, cows give the milk that will make the incomparable cheeses that the region is known for. Even higher, goats and sheep roam freely up to the high passes. Priceless and, wa and pride for the farmers, the black cows of Switzerland, called the Vache de Reims, named after the original valley they come from, are the most impressive and the most beautiful, wearing great leather collar and carrying enormous bells that we can hear miles away, the sound of Switzerland, if any. Our accommodation are simply the best we can find all around the TMV. Every hotel will have an internet connection too. In Chamonix, we use a family run three-star hotel called Lustale. The two sisters, Veronique and Agnes, will do everything to best welcome the guests in their place. Well located, a few minutes away on foot to the center, the hotel sits in a quiet location with a nice garden and swimming pool. From every balcony, the view is great, with Mont Blanc and the long Glacier des Bossons floating down from the summit. Great breakfast also with homemade croissant and patisserie. The next night in France is in Les Contamines, a small family oriented village at the end of the valley. Slightly out of town, the hotel La Chemina is on the way on our next morning hike. The comfortable bar is the place to meet for our daily orientation meeting. Dinner is at the hotel and food is excellent. Some of the hikers may also make time for a visit to the jacuzzi and the sauna. The actual hike will take us to the hamlet of Les Chapieux, but a short transfer is needed to find a better accommodation in Bouc Saint Maurice in a very comfortable three star hotel, L'Authentique. Enough time for a quick swim in the beautiful indoor swimming pool before dinner, which is taken in a small restaurant well known by the locals, as the food is just fantastic, simply served, just like home, but so good. Hotel Berto, I will stop in Italy in Courmayeur. A very nice family hosts us for the night in a hotel just off the main pedestrian street. Time to stroll through down, down, merging with the flow of Italian during their evening passeggiata, the place to be and the place to be seen. Dinner is free in one of the many and good restaurants in town. Breakfast is beautifully presented and has an impressive choice of food, including all local products from the Aosta Valley, yogurt, fruit juice, etc. In Switzerland, Eve, the owner of the hotel, will have everything ready for us in Champé. 
as we come in after a 30 minute transfer from the trailhead in La Foulie. The hotel is in town, large town enough to have at least two stores, a supermarket and a sports shop. But the main attraction of Champlain is a beautiful lake, not the shopping. High quality dinner at the hotel and good breakfast as well. The last night on the trail is in Trien, a small and cute village grouped up all around its large church. La Grande Ours, the Big Dipper in English, is a hotel for the night. Having an evening beer facing the mountain and enjoying the last evening together on the trail is always a special moment. The hotel has all new and comfortable room, but shared bathroom. Dinner and breakfast are both taken at the hotel. The French cuisine is well known, but in fact, the food is really good all along the TMB. Hotels provide great service and can accommodate special diets as well. Refueling with good food after a good day hiking certainly is good, needed, and part of the enjoyment of the trip. In France, on the way up to the pass, a stop at La Ville des Glaciers has always been special for me. For a few moments, we enter the life of the farmers that are living there for the summer. These three brothers and the helpers come up to the Alpine retreat from mid-June to end of September with their 180 cows, making the best cheese there is, the Beaufort. Large wheels of 90 pounds are well looked after and aging for six months before being sold to the lucky ones. After visiting the cellar, time to buy some cheese for our next lunch, which we'll be taking after the climb up to the Col de la Seine into Italy. Although we have to make it to the next destination in due time, there is time for small stops and rest along the way. We stop for mid-morning snacks, where and when the guys know it is appropriate to do so. We also see mountain huts and small cafes where it is possible to stop and have a drink and during a morning cappuccino or a four o'clock tea. Every day, the guides provide a fresh lunch for everyone. Local and typical projects are always chosen first, from French baguette to Italian prosciutto to Swiss cheese. The TMB is also a chance to experience all kinds of food and all kinds of new tastes. Everyone in the group is asked to carry some of the lunch and the midday stop is a time to open the backpacks and discover all the goodies that will make our beautiful lunch. It is also time to relax, enjoy the view, maybe have a quick nap before getting back on the trail. Our dinner together in Chamonix, for example, are taking at a local restaurant, which has a large menu, but has also specialized in all the local dishes. Many of them are very cheesy, of course. We all know the, about the cheese fondue, but probably less about the Bertou or la Tartiflette, a chance to experience it all. Our farewell dinner takes place in a very nice restaurant, and classy restaurant, part of the Albert Premier Hotel, our five-star hotel in town. Keeping the atmosphere quite casual, the restaurant has great food and give us plenty of it for our last evening. Now the weather in the Alps can be changeable and hikers have to be ready for anything. Of course, most days are beautiful and hiking in shorts and t-shirts is the way to go. But packing up for the trip should also include rain gear, gloves and ski hat. The best way to dress is with layers, polar fleece or so to stay warm, Gore-Tex type rainproof and windproof equipment to stay dry, but both for upper body and legs. Of course, the usual sunglasses, sun cream, sun hat as well. Last but not least, appropriate hiking boots are mandatory, waterproof and well broken in. This is to provide blisters, of course. Lightweight shoes can be okay for some of the stages, but again, it can be snow too, and they will not be sufficient then. That can be seen and discussed at the time. Another important part of the equipment needed is a proper backpack. It should be large enough to carry all the gear mentioned, and of course, still have enough room for the lunch part that we'll be taking by each guest. Each person should have its own backpack. Preferably, none of the gear should be attached outside of the bag, always source of problem and potential loss during the trip, either on the trail or in transport. The water is good to drink at any location in hotels and town. While on the trail, the guys can mention the best and safe places to refill water. 
The stops at mountain huts are of course the best time to get drinks, water, and use the facilities. Walking poles, they are very good to have. Best is to have two of them for a better balance. Poles really help either going uphill or downhill. They sure save the knees from unneeded stress. And studying has mentioned about 30% less stress on the knees. This can make a significant difference during the week. Collapsing walking poles can be brought over or found in town. Well, I hope this quick review of the Tour du Mont Blanc will give you useful information and even better, will make you want to do it. On behalf of the full team of the five Boundless Journey guides, we're hoping to welcome you soon to Chamonix and we're looking forward to many more hiking trips in the Alps. Thank you very much and see you soon, I hope. All the best. Thank you so much, Eric. It's been fantastic listening to you speak about boundless journeys toward Mont Blanc experience. It makes me long for the mountains, especially all the cheese and wine. So we shouldn't go without mentioning of the Tour de Mont Blanc sister iconic trek, the Haute Route, which Eric guides as well. The Tour de Mont Blanc was the focus of today's webinar, yet for those who are interested in a more linear journey from Chamonix, France, to the classic town of Zermatt in Switzerland, with the renowned Matterhorn Peak towering above, we offer two departures of the Haute Route trip in August and September. And if this is the year to really maximize on your hiking endeavors and you want to go for the gold, the Haute Route dates are scheduled so that they may be completed back-to-back -back after the Tour de Mont Blanc trips. So whether by itself or back to back with the Tour de Mont Blanc, the Haute Route is a comparatively phenomenal mountain trek of similar difficulty and style, yet in the different setting of the Swiss Alps and two nights in Zermatt as the grand finale. Feel free to contact me with any questions at all about this itinerary as well. In closing, hiking with boundless journeys offers some distinct advantages. For example, we keep our group small with never more than 16 guests, and we have two guides for groups of nine or more. This allows us to tread lightly and have more intimate meals and experiences. We can also help you with any pre or post trip arrangements you might need from pre tour hotels to international flight planning and even suggestions on how to spend an extra day or two in Chamonix. And as Eric certainly highlighted, our guides are all incredibly experienced and enthusiastic about the tour. Because they're local to Chamonix, they know the regions and the trails inside and out. And as you saw in this presentation, we choose only the most charming and comfortable boutique hotels with excellent personalized service. You'll get a true feeling of the culture and warm hospitality of the area. And last but not least, if you would like to travel with other Boundless Journeys guests, we offer group tours and also provide custom trip planning services for, for private groups. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about this fantastic experience and I look forward to hearing from you all very soon and better yet, hosting you on your own journey of the Tour de Mont Blanc. If you'd like to chat more about the trip, please call me at 800-941-8010 or email me at michelle at boundlessjourneys.com. Merci beaucoup and à bientôt.